I want to invite you into this idea that your mind gives you who you're being, not what you want. If you ask why, it's going to give you a bunch of reasons why, but not give you the solution. If you ask for the solution, but you expect the solution to be painful, it'll give you painful solutions. If you have a sense of expectancy that it's already happened and you really believe that, it's going to give you that. Your mind as a supercomputer can sort and give you all these things. Learn to use it to your advantage. So in this video, I want to talk about thinking and why thinking will never solve your problems with women. A lot of you guys are, you know, you, you come to this stuff because you're overthinkers, because you think a lot. I did. And that was my biggest problem. So I would think way too much when trying to figure out how to solve my problems with women. I mean, it's ultimately what it comes down to. I was like, I would always ask why. How many of you ask that question? Why? That question why is the worst question to ask. I mean, I get clients still asking, I get, I get the coaches, I'll even catch myself sometimes still asking because it's so automatic to ask why. Why do I have this problem? Why don't women like me? Why can't I get a date? Why, 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 why? And what why does is uh, it gives you more. And, and it's, it's a little bit of a misnomer to say why is a bad question to ask, but the basic idea and the way we ask why, it, it, it is a bad question to ask. And what I mean by this is for what the universe, consciousness, life gives you, is what is in your subconscious mind it gives you more of what you're being and not what you're asking it always gives you what you're being that's the best way to put it so when i say why do i have this problem and i'm frustrated annoyed wanting to figure it out these are the feelings driving the question then what i get it's like i'm placing an order with the universe so like i'm like if you put in a ticket i get more why i don't get the solution the universe doesn't go, oh, consciousness, God, life doesn't go, wow, he wants the solution to this why. It says he's worrying and stressing over why. Let's give him more worry and stress over why. Like the implied message in your question is, I don't know the answer. And so the universe has to give you more reasons you don't get the answer, you don't understand the answer, or hope or possibilities, but it can't give you the actual solution because that's not the question you're asking. Now, if you were saying, what's the solution? Again, it would come back to what are you feeling with it? Because you're placing an order, right? So what's the solution to this problem? It's a better question to ask. But if you're saying, what's the solution? You're still stressing and worrying in the background of your mind at the deepest level that you don't know the solution. I need the solution. I need the solution. You're still going to get more of a need for a solution than the solution itself. The moment you start asking, what's the solution? I know there's a solution and you have the feeling of certainty, belief that there is one, belief that it's going to happen, belief that it's coming, and you start to develop that feeling, that's when your subconscious mind is going to start to direct you in a direction that's going to get the results you want. It's going to take you closer to the actual solution in this situation. So in your life, which of these questions are you asking? Now, I just gave you three scenarios and you got to look at what your emotional relationship is, what your presupposition or what you're implying to your subconscious mind into the world along with the question. And another way I could ask it is, you know, why do I have this problem with a sense of certainty that I'm going to get a why and I'll probably get a clear why, but that's still not a solution. Is it? I'll get a clear distinctive why this is why I have the problem. And if I don't move to, show me the solution, then I'm not going to get the solution and with a confident tone. Now, what if we took it a step further? These are all great ideas so far. I, I love it. I love the whole because I, I, I wanted to make sure I explained it in a way where you guys can get it. Hopefully you are. What if we said not what is the solution? Show it to me confidently. But what if you said the solution is already here? This is already happening. It's done. I can feel it in my bones. It's like you're going to go out and race. Let's say you're, you're, you're going to go out on a, a, a race and you're the best sprinter in town. And you're like, this is done. I'm going to win. I've already got this beat. You see yourself crossing the finish line. You see everybody cheering. You see the trophy in your hand. There's that certainty inside your body that it's already done. It's not that going to happen. It's done. And it's almost like the physical world is catching up with your internal world. 
that's even more powerful if you can do that. Now the caveat here is you can't lie. You can't say to yourself, I feel like it's done when you don't. So unless you're really close, like you're close to that feeling, you can massage it in, right? But if you're really far away in massive doubt and you say that, you're actually going to get amplified the doubt, okay? So we have to get really honest about what we're feeling and then start working our way to this sense that it's already done. That's the ultimate goal. Because again, I'm going to go back to my original statement, which is so easy to forget and everybody forgets this, is the world gives you what you're being, not what literally what you're asking for, but in the words, but in what you're being behind the words. How do you feel about this thing? If I feel like and my bones that I'm a sexy bastard and women love me. And I don't even have to, like if I go out to a bar and I'm gonna go meet women tonight, I don't go out there and go, I hope I'm gonna meet women. Somebody, my, a friend comes up to me, maybe he's not nearly as good as with, with women. And he's like, hey, you, you think you're gonna meet women tonight? My response would be, if I was really solid, my response would be, well, why wouldn't I? I mean, I'm, I'm male, women like men, I'm sexy, women like sexy guys. It's gonna happen, it's just the way it is. And there's that sense of certainty in that energy, in that belief, in that feeling. So I want you to kind of let this register for a minute. Can you get that sense of certainty? If you're really far from it and you say, why do I have this problem with women? And I say, say it's solved. What's the solution? Or take it a step further. This is already solved. This is happening. I can already see it happening and your body goes into resistance and you can feel your body. If you, if you, if you can't feel your body, you need to watch my video on, on feeling, learning to feel your body. Then you need to work out that resistance. You need to get to a point, even if it's only 1% where you can feel like it's already done or it's happening. One of the two. And if you can get 1%, you can get 2%. And that's how I do it. It's called the 1% rule. I don't, I, as soon as I catch myself asking why, worrying I let go of the worry and I start saying okay what can I feel okay if I'm gonna feel like I'm good with women how can, can I feel 1% good with women can I feel 1 and 100th percent good with women can I feel good with a certain type of woman and I start to massage that a little bit and play with it okay can I feel 1% better and what I'll do is I'll meditate on feeling that feeling every day and expanding it I might take a 30-day practice where I'm constantly expanding it over the next 30 days never rushing it Letting go of all wanting, all chasing, all needing, because the implied message of that, again, is that I don't have it. If I want it, I don't have it. So what I'm working on is if I want it, go smaller to the feeling of having, no matter how, even if it's microscopic, because you can all find a feeling of having that might be microscopic buried inside you somewhere. And if you meditate deep enough on that feeling for long enough, it has to grow. Whatever you focus on has to expand. So what I am always doing is if I got this big, let's say I've got 99% of my energy focused on, I can't get women, but I've got 1%, I can, I can see right in that situation, I can get women. What I'll do is I'll move my focus to that 1% and I'll say, can I just enjoy this 1% instead of worrying over the 99? Can I nurture this 1%? Can I play with this 1% until it turns into 2%? And then eventually 3% and it starts to grow bigger and bigger and bigger as a feeling inside of me. You're receiving what you want in life all comes down to cultivating the feeling of it. And you have to get really good at cultivating the feeling of it. A sense of expectancy, a sense of having, a sense of being at the ultimate level. And when you can do that, you can have whatever you want. And this is why thinking and asking that question why will never get you what you want. If I'm sitting there, sitting there trying to analyze the solution, I'm not going to get a solution. Now, there is an exception to that rule. There are some guys out there that are analytical that seem to get a lot of success. Why is that? Because when they think why, they expect an answer. When they look for a solution, they expect a bunch of analytical reasons why, and they act on them and they get a solution. They have a built-in sense of expectancy, and they think the analyzation process is what's doing it. And so they'll come up with all these analytical reasons why this is working. But what really did it was their sense of expectancy, their belief. You gotta remember that your subconscious mind is a supercomputer. It's, it's so powerful. So I've heard people say 10 to 40 million bits of data per second, and I've heard much higher. Joe Dispenza says it's much higher. And so your subconscious mind is processing at an insane rate. And if you 
put into it this sense that this is going to be hard. What's the solution? I, it's going to be difficult. It will go out and sort through all those millions of bits of data to find the ones that perfectly match what you're feeling. That this is hard. This is difficult. Here's some difficult solutions for you to, to, to ponder over. This will never work for me. Here's a bunch of reasons why it'll never work for you. Because you can sort through that 40 million bits of data per second and, and then feed those to your conscious mind. But if you have a sense of expectancy, this is done, and you really feel it in your gut, and your turn on, and your legs, and your whole body's alive with that idea, it'll sort through that 40 million bits of data per second and find a bunch of reasons why that is true. And you'll start to see that. So you just need to hook onto that 1%, and that 1% can grow and grow and grow and grow. And next thing you know, you'll be 99% believing you're the shit with women. You're it. You're got it alive. Women love you. 1% of you will have some doubt and you can just put that aside. You can even start shrinking that more. And it's about that ability to play with that transition with anything you want in life that makes it true. You remember, you got a lot of subconscious beliefs that might be holding you back in this area. And they're the ones that are asking why with all the pain. They're the ones that are beating you up. And it's going to take a while for those to quiet down. You don't just turn like a, a, a giant uh, cruise ship with you don't spin the wheel and turn it around on a dime you have to turn it slowly and your subconscious mind is like a giant cruise ship it's going to turn slowly and you get if you keep relaxing into it stop rushing it let go of all the wanting and the chasing which is the presupposition that i don't have and you keep expecting and believing working on that and going as small as you have to and building it up slowly in 30 60 90 days you can radically shift your life now one more thing, if you do that, and let's say you do a daily practice, I love daily practice. So if I do a daily practice of building that sense of expectancy, I'm going to work on feeling 1% more, I'm going to use affirmations, whatever works for me, whatever makes me feel good. If affirmations make you feel good, if revealing makes you feel good, if doing a collage of pictures makes you feel and you just keep meditating on that every morning and you feel a little warmer and fuzzier inside and that's great. But, and you do that for 20 minutes, a half hour, an hour. But then you spend the rest of the day beating yourself up, wondering why. That's not good either. So you have to have not only you could do that morning practice, maybe an evening practice, especially in the beginning, but throughout the day, you have to have a practice where you stop all that negative thinking over and over. It's going to happen a lot in the beginning. Oh, there's that negative thinking. I'm asking why again. I'm stressing. Can I take a five minute break and clear that out of my system? Then I'll take another five minute break later. And that's how I started when I really shifted my life in this business is I would, I literally probably stopped. Like, I don't even know how many times a day to stop my negative thinking and to bring, welcome positive. You have to bring in something else. So I'd release the negative, welcome in the positive. I'd welcome the negative, see it, honor it, let it go, welcome in the positive, get my heart back open, be feeling good, relax in the body and move forward. And then about an hour later, I'd do it again. And about an hour later, I'd do it again. Because I didn't want that stuff like I'm doing this this nice ritual in the morning, but I don't want that those those thoughts throughout the day to ruin what I've been building. So I'm constantly pattern interrupting those thoughts and starting to create a new internal reality for my subconscious mind. It's almost like a thinking detox, but not just thinking. You got to also look at your emotional mind. In the beginning, I used to try to just focus on the thinking and all that did was cause a ton of stress. And for people that are super negative, get a copy of the revealing process, do this daily practice, morning, night, stops throughout the day and you could shift your whole life guys you can shift so much in your life change the whole direction flow of it that's what it's really about i've done it i've seen so many other people do it so i want to invite you into this idea that your mind gives you who you're being not what you want if you ask why it's going to give you a bunch of reasons why but not give you the solution if you ask for the solution but you expect the solution to be painful it'll give you painful solutions if you have a sense of expectancy that it's already happened and you really believe that it's going to give you that your mind as a supercomputer can sort and give you all these things learn to use it to your advantage with that said i hope you like this video and what I'd really love for you to do is put your comments below. If there's something you really want to know more about, if there's an aspect of this you want me to go deeper into, I can do that. We'd love to do that. We're constantly monitoring the comments. Also, make sure to like and subscribe. Make sure to hit that bell notification. It really helps us to grow the channel, helps us to give you more of this great content that you love. And make sure to share the video. If you haven't shared it, share it with 
anybody because again that helps us to grow the channel and helps us to take off we've been a little slow in our growth and i get the feeling that we're not being exposed to a lot of people anymore and so the more you put us out there the more we can grow the more content we can bring you so i think that's pretty much it guys uh, hopefully again you enjoyed this video and you have a beautiful day and remember only the confident really live see you in the next video take care